Hello and welcome to Living With. I'm your host, Katrina Smith, and hello, Sean. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Okay, thanks. Um, I have some questions, do you mind me asking them? No, that's or quite all right, any, any, any way I can help. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, let me pull them up real quickly. Um, All right. Um, what do you do um, before we um, before we get into our interview? Do you have any uh, would like to share anything with our viewers? Well, just that I'm happy to be here. It, it's it's always a joy to talk to fellow people with disabilities, and I'm, I really look forward to it. All right. Thank you. What do you do for a living? I am a history professor. Okay. Um, what age were you diagnosed with CP? I was diagnosed at the age of two. Okay. Can you explain what CP is and what were the symptoms? Well, it's a motor disorder, in my case, caused by premature birth. Um, it makes muscle movements difficult. I have a kind called spastic that tightens the muscles in the legs. And I was having difficulty walking and uh, had some, some drooling issues that went away later. Okay. But uh, mine is a relatively mild case. Um, I'm still able to speak pretty well and, and do my self-care and things of that sort. Okay. Um, what caused CP? In my case, it was caused I was born uh, very low birth weight, two pounds, two ounces, three and a half months premature. Ooh. Okay. How does having CP affect your everyday life? Well, as I, I, use a wheelchair outside my home. I, I crawl within my home because the stairs, it's an older house and I'm not able to drive. My handwriting is unreadable, but um, other than that, I, I manage pretty well. All right. Um, what helps you stay motivated when you feel frustrated? Well, my religious faith, I'm a devout Christian. I believe there's a divine purpose from uh, my difficulties. Also, as I said, I have a loving family and friends who've done a lot to help me. Mm -hmm. Do you have a support group like family and friends? Yes, I do. I, I, I have many relatives and I have many friends. I'm also the head of what's called the Union County Advisory Board, which is a group of adults with disabilities that uh, advise local governments. And I'm very active in Theater for Everyone, which is a theater program run by the Paper Mill Playhouse for people with disabilities. That's a big source of my emotional support. All right. Um, what was it like going through school and earning your PhD? Well, it was both very interesting and a great challenge. At a time at, when I began school, I was, as I told you before, in a separate school for a little while and then in special ed classes. So I was a little isolated and I got a lot out of reading and family contacts. As I got older, I was able to make more friends. The PhD took a long time, but the thrill of doing travel for research, of studying all these things, was a real pleasure. And I was just determined as with becoming an Eagle Scout or getting my other degrees or a million other things I've done in my life, I just wasn't gonna give up. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't frustrating at times, but I've got a stubbornness that keeps me going on things. Okay. Um, when going to school, did you play any sports? Uh, no, I designed an adaptive phys ed program, but uh, the main thing I had for sports was being involved in the Boy Scout movement, camping and earning merit badges. That was a lot of fun. 
Okay. What is the biggest misconception about your disability? The biggest misconception is it always is an intellectual disability as well. That's really not the case for most people. I'm, I'm blessed as with most of the people with CP I know with uh, least average intelligence. I have a friend who's a doctor who is in a wheelchair with CP. Um, and, and, and as I said the other day, just this assumption that there's tons and tons of federal money when there isn't. Great. Right. Um, what are some obstacles you have faced and what were some strategies you used to overcome well, them? The obstacle, uh, the physical obstacle is sometimes, like for example, it will take me a long time uh, to put on socks because my foot is twisted. So I bought, even though I'm not diabetic, I bought diabetic socks because they're easier to get on and off. Mm -hmm. I, um, finding shoes is difficult. Sometimes um, I, I don't always have the energy that I would like, but I, I try to exercise and be as active as possible and, and not be afraid to ask for help when I need it, but also not be afraid to try when to do something by myself. Right. Hey, how has CP affected you growing up? Well, it gave me a different sort of life um, with ups and downs. It brought me a lot closer to my family and, and to the sort of friends who really understood what I was trying to do, both uh, who had the disability and who didn't. It made me really passionate about learning because that was my main outlet. And it's taught me things. Would I like to avoid the physical pain of uh, my legs, which do ache sometimes? Yes. But I think it's made me a, a broader person and made me grateful for what I do have. Okay. What type of support did you receive in school with having CP? Well, I, I was able to um, type essays, uh, we didn't really have computers that much, but at least first with a typewriter, I got some extended mm -hmm. time on tests. My math skills are terrible, so I, I did get a little help with that. But I was just, I was encouraged to really develop my mind. And I was reading Shakespeare and Orwell as a very young kid, and that isn't something most people do. So okay. that, was in, that was a challenge to some of the teachers who didn't quite know how to deal with that. But mm -hmm. most of them were very supportive and helpful. All right. So what advice would you give to our viewers who may have cerebral palsy? As I said, never believe anyone else, even your closest family or doctors, important as they are, mm -hmm. knows more about what you need than you do. You're going to find that out for yourself. Don't be afraid to try. Don't be afraid to do things that seem impossible. But at the same time, if you need help, don't hide it. Don't think a medical cure is going to fix everything. They can help, but the problem is there and it's not going away. My old physical therapist used to say, you cure meat, not people. In other words, what you have is there and you can certainly exercise and do other things, but to try to fix what can't be fixed will take a lot of your energy and waste time. How would you motivate others to come out and talk about their disability? I would encourage them to see themselves as having dealt with and understood things that most people can't. It isn't an attempt to be better, but we've had obstacles and difficulties physically and mentally that most people don't have. So we can be proud of that. It's not something to be ashamed of. It doesn't make you less than. It makes you a warrior in a spiritual sense. Right. Um, do you have anything you would like to say to our viewers? Well, as I said, to thank them for the opportunity of listening, to encourage them to pick up my book, Things You Don't Know, which is a historical profile, including some about disability, that's written by myself and my good friend, William Weaver. Um, it's, on, it's on Amazon. It's very cheap. Uh, but just to thank, thank everybody for finding their own path and letting me be a part of their journey by being on your podcast. Thank you. Um, that's all we have for today. Thank you for okay, sharing. Thank you very much. I'd be, as I said, 
I'd be happy to come back any any other time. All right.